It's been 18 long months since we went pro. We survived the MCO. It's time to go. Rip, rip it! All these calculations, amazing creations, a nation of creators working on solid workstations. Who's got the patience for a waiting on a render? I wonder who's got the time to design when you're waiting on Blender. Where's the time pouring wine down the sink? No, threaded lines might find time to go, bro. We're gonna put the V in V ray. Even Maya's gonna be in present K. Zen 3 is gently entering the picture 59.75 Threat Ripper Pro So bro, what you gonna do? Oh, Haven't subscribed yet? Wait for what? So like I predicted when we reviewed the Threadripper Pro 3955WX, check it out if you haven't already, there hasn't been a new non-pro Threadripper since 2019 with 3rd gen. STRX 4 socket users with TRX 40 motherboards have been left without an upgrade path after just one generation, just like X399, although officially it's not discontinued yet. Anyways, as someone who has always been a high-end desktop or HEDT user since my uni days in architecture, starting with Intel's LGA 1366 uh, X58 chipset more than 10 years ago, feeling oh, I have used all three generations of non-pro Threadripper processors. But recently, however, I find myself reaching out for my Ryzen 9 5950X desktop a lot more because to be honest, it is simply more than enough for our rather moderate creative workloads in 4K video editing, offline and online, color grading, motion graphics, uh, audio mixing and such. Also, having better single core performance means that I get to occasionally tree too long and pwn some noobs in Valorant or let people pwn me like a noob. Lah. But enough about me and my grandfather's story about how consumer processors have really narrowed the gap with HEDT or look, the Ryzen 9 3950X from years ago already give us 16 cores and 32 threads low. The thing is, you're probably here if you need more than 256 gigabytes of RAM. ECC RAM and more often than not also the same people who are very extra and can use up all 128 PCIe lanes. Also your pocket is probably very deep for running a business and you know that the cost of something like a Threadripper Pro workstation would be offset by savings in labour, hourly rate from professionals behind the helm or keyboard in this case. So let's dive right in. Now firstly, let's take a look at the specifications. The Threadripper Pro 5975WX come with 32 Zen 3 cores and 64 threads, a base clock of 3.5 GHz and 4.5 GHz boost. It also comes with a whopping 128 MB of L3 cache and a 280 W TDP. It is the second most expensive in the lineup, uh, topped by the even crazier 64 core 5995WX that Linus recently covered. With this Zen 3 refresh, we get faster cores, more cache, uh, improved memory controllers, and AMD's shadow stack feature. Otherwise, it's using the same SWRX8 socket and WRX80 chipset as the Threadripper Pro 3000 series that we checked out previously with support for 2TB of ECC RAM in 8 individual channels as well as 128 uh, PCIe Gen 4 lanes, 120 of which are actually usable. Of course, uh, your existing motherboard would need a BIOS update to support these CPUs. For our test bench, we use the same ASUS Pro W uh, WRX ATE Sage SE Wi-Fi motherboard as last time. Uh, with a 420mm Corsair IQ H170i Elite LCD uh, AIO cooler. I wouldn't recommend anything lower than 360mm uh, uh, AIO cooler with something like this. Uh, for the GPU, we use the RTX 3090 for consistency sake. Now I'm going to compare this Threadripper Pro 5975WX against the older 3955WX simply because I couldn't get my hands on a higher end 3000 series TR Pro. A processor at this moment, but it should still show us some indication of whether or not having more than 16 cores uh, would be beneficial for some of these workloads that we tested on. On top of that, I'm throwing in numbers from top of the line consumer CPUs from both Team Red and Blue. So I'm talking about the Ryzen 9 5950 
X and also the 12th Gen uh, i9 12900K. Please note that this is a pure CPU performance comparison. Uh, if we wanted to test for things like multiple GPU configurations or multiple NVMe storage uh, in RAID, uh, the possibilities are almost endless and we would be sitting here all day. So, yeah. Here's the full list of the components in our test bench in case you're interested. Now let's move on to the numbers and firstly let's take a look at productivity and application benchmarks since this is a workstation. Starting with Cinebench R20, while the consumer CPUs still pull ahead in single core, uh, those extra 16 cores really scale up properly in multi-core. I mean just look at the Cinebench R23 scores, power level over 49,000. 7-Zip again flexes those 32 cores on that 5975WX, but what we're more curious about is of course, 3D applications. As you can see in Corona, V-Ray and Blender, the Threadripper Pro renders twice or at least 80% faster than all the consumer processors. So if 3D work is what you're dealing with, since performance scales well with core count, you should definitely go for TR Pro if you have the budget. Next, we have content creation benchmarks with Puget Bench. In Premiere Pro, it seems like the increased bandwidth of Threadripper Pro really helps as you can see with the 3955. WX. And while core count might not matter as much, the increased single core performance really gave that 5975WX a nice boost. After Effects show similar results but not as much of an uplift on that 5975WX. The same can be observed with Photoshop. Though I must say, when compositions get more complex in AE, uh, the TR Pro would probably pull ahead. Finally, looking at DaVinci Resolve, we see similar results to Premiere. Though I must say that since Resolve utilizes GPUs much better than Premiere, if we add another or a couple more GPUs to the mix, Resolve would be able to benefit more. Next, we're gonna just ignore gaming benchmarks since Threadripper Pro is not meant for that. Just kidding, who doesn't want a game on a 30,000 ringgit or 6.5 thousand US dollars processor? Just looking at Time Spy, if you're gaming, we would definitely go for the consumer CPUs instead. Uh, though you might fare better in higher resolutions like 4K as demonstrated with Time Spy Extreme. We did a couple of games like Shadow of Tomb Raider where the results was a little surprisingly in the 5975WX's favor. Cyberpunk also saw the 5975 WX pull ahead. However, I must say that this is all totally irrelevant because I would absolutely discourage people from using a Threadripper Pro platform for gaming because it's just really bad value for your money. Unless you're a bangsawan and you don't really care or if you just want to like game on your workstation. Finally, we're gonna look at the thermals and power consumption. Looking at temperature, I was like, whoa. With the same TDP of 280 watts, the Zen 3 Threadripper Pro is 10 degrees cooler than the 3955WX that has half the core count. Power consumption definitely proved that the 5975WX was hitting that 280 uh, plus minus uh, watt mark, so it's definitely a lot more thermal efficient than last generation. So if you're upgrading to this processor, you're also harming the planet a lot less. So. Just food for thought. Now judging by these numbers alone, it would seem like consumer CPUs are already pretty capable huh? and comparable to the Threadripper Pro in terms of performance, especially when it comes to content creation workloads. It's certainly true that if you're dealing with H.264 or H.265 footage from modern mirrorless cameras or even ProRes from say an Atomos recorder, then you're better off sticking to something like a Ryzen 9 5950X with a Radeon RX 6950 XT or RTX 3090 with the full 128GB of RAM. Okay, that should be enough. Most of the editing software that we use like Premiere Pro will not be able to fully utilize the extra cores nor the PCIe lanes anyways. Okay, except for maybe DaVinci Resolve, which allows you to use multiple GPUs. But hey man, we are not the only prosumers in the world. Also, definitely not the highest paid. Especially because you didn't subscribe to our YouTube channel. Jokes aside, in professional settings where time equals to money, hourly rates of working professionals quickly outweighs the price tag of an expensive workstation. Especially if you have them sitting around fidgeting with their thousand dollar pants. It's made from titanium, okay? 
so satisfying. Hashtag weird flex. I'm talking about you people who deal with simulations, 3D rendering, financial stuff, or even super heavy footage for something complex like a full length feature film like here, there, and everywhere at once, where you need the computing power at your fingertips and not from something like a render farm far away, uh, then yes, you would definitely benefit from Threadripper Pro. One more thing, there seems to have been a popular misconception where prosumers are always comparing CPU to GPU. Like, you should get two 3090s with a 5950X instead of a Threadripper with only a 3090. Yell should remember that they are not directly comparable and essentially serve very different functions. Apples and oranges. Let's take 3D rendering for example. With a CPU like the Threadripper Pro 5975WX also comes with the access to more PCIe lanes which allows you to use up to 7 graphics card, something like the Radeon RX 6950 XT or the RTX 3090s, which will give you even more GPU rendering power than a consumer processor and chipset like the Ryzen 9 uh, 5950X and also the X570. The moral of the story is that if you are not seeing the need for that kind of performance, then you're simply not the customer, full stop. And if you are, you would understand uh, the potential value that something like this can offer you and all the time that you can potentially also save with a very, very powerful workstation with Threadripper Pro. And that is everything I have to say about 5000 series Threadripper processors. Uh, please note that I'm not super, super expert about a lot of the workloads that can fully uh, saturate and utilize something like this. I can only show you uh, benchmarks that I can potentially think about or know that can potentially utilize some of the features that's being offered right here. But again, I'm not a 3D animator and I've been doing architecture stuff for quite a long time. But yeah, the, you know, just take it with a grain of salt. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to not miss out on more content like this. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, my name is Shane, the Bounce I from Mob House, and I will see you in the next one.